Okay, we've got a table filled with data. This program reads that data, dumps it to the screen, then removes it from the database. Here you can see from the main method that the database is opened, the contents of the table is displayed, the table is deleted, and the database is then closed. The open method is quite simple. It does just what it says it does. It creates a connection object, then creates a statement object. The data is retrieved from the database by a call to the method execute query. The SQL command is a select statement which has the job of determining which rows are to be returned and packing them up in the result object. Now, not all result objects are created equal. You can access the data held in all of them, but this particular example is one of the simple ones and you can only scan forward by calling next. There are some other methods that do other things, but in this particular result set, all you can do is read through the data once from front to back. More about all this later. You see, the result set not only contains all the data, it also contains something known as a cursor that can only point to one row at a time. When the result set first comes to you, its cursor isn't pointing at anything, and you have to set it. The cursor is set to the first record by calling the next method. Each time you call the next method, the cursor moves to the next piece of data. By the way, all indexing into the data is based on the number 1. There is no index 0 inside a result set. So the first time through the loop, the cursor is set on row 1 of the set that was retrieved. The result set method has a method call for each data type that it can hold. The first column is a string data type and we want to get that one so a call is made to get string. The argument being one means that it's the first column and the cursor has already been set to the specific row. The second data item is an integer. It's an int data type and it has an index of two. So a call to get int 2 returns its value. This loop just pads out the name to 16 characters for display and this line prints the data. The data consists of the name of the animal and the count of its legs. The drop table method makes a call to execute update with an SQL command to drop the table. Here again the status return indicates success or failure. Now this close method is a little different than the one in the previous example. It does exactly the same thing, but this one has two try blocks. This way, if the first one fails, the second one will still execute. Now, this program should display the contents of the table in the database. And there it is, the information that was stored in the table by the other program. And this program should have deleted it. Running it again shows this. We only get error messages now.